and welcome to Bar Bliss. As you can see, we're a ways away from it being a fully functioning bar, but today in this how-to video, I will be showing you how to put stone veneer on the face of this half wall, as well as a step down below. So, seeing as how this is a bar video, pour yourself a responsibly sized drink, kick back, and enjoy. Gotta save some for later. The end result should match the fireplace that I've stoned recently with the veneer and the hearthstone. So let's go over the materials that you'll need for today's project. For this project, you will need Duroc cement board, a larger veneer block such as a hearthstone, stone veneer, a drill with rock screws, proper mortar for your stone veneer, a bucket and drill for mixing your mortar, a half inch by half inch trowel and margin trowel, at least one level, an angle grinder for making cuts in the stone, and plenty of refreshments to keep you hydrated during this project. So as far as mortar goes, be sure to look at the manufacturer's specifications to see exactly what they uh, recommend, as well as the backing board and any prep work that you need to do. Um, for this particular stone, it is uh, El Dorado Cliff Stone, and you just need the concrete backer with the uh, mortar directly up against it. There's no metal mesh or scratch coat or anything like that. I am going with Tex Sturdy Flex, which is a thin set mortar. It was a lot easier to mix up than using uh, traditional mortar and mixing in sand and doing that sort of thing. So that's why I went with this. It is polymer modified, so it's gonna be a little bit harder than just a traditional thin set. Um, and this is one of my test pieces and I'm gonna show you how well it sticks and why I decided to go with this. That's not going anywhere with the hammer. All right. I think that makes my point. I'll show you what it did here. So as you can see, the concrete board was actually breaking before the mortar was coming off from the, uh, the concrete board or the stone. So this stuff works very well uh, for laying down this uh, veneer. I will say using this thin set, I did mix it a little differently just to make sure when these are stuck on the board that they weren't gonna be sliding down. Uh, so I mixed it similar to how I make my videos, uh, a little tacky and a bit dry. Our first step is to cover everything with the Duroc board. I'm gonna cut out our uh, front piece here and our top piece and then measure out our face here and uh, get all those attached. So this dirt rock board is actually pretty easy to cut. All you need to do is have a uh, sharp utility knife that will go through the top layer of mesh and then you'll bend it just like you do um, uh, drywall and then you'll cut the back side of it. Now with all of our pieces cut, it's time to secure them. I'm gonna be using some screws that are specifically made for concrete board. If you don't do that over time, they can corrode and actually break, so be sure you're using the right screws for this product. And also for this vertical wall, you wanna be sure to only go no more than eight inches between screws uh, when you're going up, um, just because it's gonna be holding quite a bit of weight, so you wanna be sure it's held on there securely. So here's all the dirt rock on the wall. As you can see, you're only going about every eight inches or so with those screws. There's a little bit closer at the bottom because there were some metal brackets protecting the drain pipe in there. So the next step is going to be cutting these hearthstones to the proper length for our step here. Um, I am going to have it hang over the edge to cover up the stone that's going underneath. 
Now the thickest these stones are about is an inch and a half, so I'm going to cut this hearth stone about an inch and three quarter long, so it's overhanging over the stones below. Now to cut the hearth stone, I'm gonna be using an angle grinder with a diamond cut blade on it. I'm gonna be cutting on both the top and the back side, and I'm gonna be going down about an inch on each side, and that should cut it all the way through. So for this step, I'm gonna be going outside because this is going to create a ton of dust, and it's never a bad idea to have a respirator when doing anything like this, as well as safety glasses, because it's will be throwing up rock chips while you're cutting them. All the panels are dry fit into place to make sure everything's going to fit. One other very important step is to lay out the veneer in your area. Uh, if you have enough area, it's good to lay the thicker pieces in one area, kind of the medium thick pieces in another, and then these smaller pieces in another. That's going to help, uh, help you find the pieces that you need and not be searching through a bunch of piles later. So once the hearthstones are all cut, I laid them out to make sure they were all going to fit properly. Um, next, I need to go ahead and put some plastic and some boards down on the tiles so that's not damaged during the veneer process. And then we'll mix up some thin set and get everything set into place. So now we'll get the thin set mixed up. Uh, be sure to add the thin set to water so that way uh, it mixes more thoroughly and there's not a bunch of dust that's picked up when you add the water. Like I said, you want to make this a little dry. Um, whenever you pull the thin set up, it should not be falling off of your mixer and it should be staying up in the bucket. So that way it will be sticking to the rock and it shouldn't be sliding down the wall very much. So next we'll get everything ready for the hearthstones to lay down. Uh, I'll be running a half inch by half inch trowel along the top side here uh, to get a good bed of mud and then flip these over back butter them and then place them on the uh, step here. So next we're going to fill in our lower section down here. Uh, we're just going to be using our margin trowel for back butter. Uh, the pieces. Uh, we're not going to be using the notch trowel to be putting a notch on the wall. Uh, it just goes a little bit quicker this way and it's not as messy. Um, so we will start in a corner, work our way along the bottom, and fill our way to the top piece here. So what you're going to do is pick your piece, make sure there are no large bumps on the back. If there are, go ahead and knock them off. Take your trowel, slide it along, Adding your thin set. Get a nice thick little base there. Don't need too super thick, but you want to come back in the middle and give it a little notch like that. And that's just going to allow the thin set to suction up against the concrete board there so it sticks just a little bit better while you're laying it. So I'm just going to be continuing to do that across the bottom here, uh, trying to make it look as uneven and natural as possible. Uh, so I'll be using different thicknesses, different lengths, different colors, that sort of thing. So I will go ahead and get all this done, put it all the way up to the top here on the underside of the uh, step, and then we'll move on to the next step.
So now that we're done with the bottom section, we're going to go ahead and start on the upper section. I'm going to draw a, a couple of level lines across there so we can make sure as we're going up, we're staying level and not uh, off top one side or the other. I'll also take a little bit of thin set and go on our cracks here since these are a little bit larger boards. And I'm also going to cover up what we just did with plastic so we don't drop any thin set on those. So one other quick thing, you don't have to do all of this in one day. Um, I did this part a few days ago, now I'm going to come back and do the upper part of this wall. And my dog can't be quiet. So uh, just be sure that you scrape the thin set off the upper side of these rocks so it doesn't harden and then you have a hard time laying the rest of your stone flat up against the wall. So we'll go ahead and get this going and finish this up today. So one thing you can do when you start noticing things aren't quite level, like this is slightly tilted down compared to our level line, is just take a few shims, stick it underneath the side that's low, and that way it should bring it up closer to level. Um, you don't have to do a huge gap, but just a little bit will get you back on track. That's a lot closer to level. There's just a tiny gap here and we'll be able to stack the rest of our stone up on top. So we're finishing up the last few pieces over here. Um, as you can see, like I did over on the side, I've put a board up top and that will just give me a reference point of where the rock needs to go to and give me a nice little surface to where we can set the countertops on top. And once you get to the last final few pieces, either on the top or on the side or something like that, uh, that's where you're gonna be making a lot of your cuts. Uh, for the most part, I really didn't make too many cuts throughout this entire process, um, but once you're getting down to these very specific uh, holes that you gotta fill, uh, you gotta make some cuts just to get them in there. So, um, I've, I've got my first piece here that I'll be laying in, and then the second piece is going to be going all the way up. It's a little long and it's a little thick, so I'm going to cut it down to length and trim it down a little bit across the top. So here's my piece I cut down. Uh, I cut it lengthwise and I cut the height down a little bit across the top. Um, one thing you want to make sure of is whenever you are cutting these, it's going up against the wall like this. Be sure to cut this at an angle to where you're not going to see that that edge that you cut because it's a lot lighter than the actual stone so you don't want to cut it you know you don't want to cut it at this angle here you want to cut it at uh, at this angle here that I did all right guys so here's a little up close to what I was talking about if you go ahead and put just a ledge along the top of your bar area there. It's gonna create a nice space for you to put that rock up against. Same thing that I did over here on the side. Uh, that will be capped off so you won't see the very edge of that rock, but I wanted to get it as close to that edge as possible, so just put a spare piece of board along the edge, give it a nice clean edge over there. Also, here's a few of the shims that I use just to level things out a little bit. As you can see, it doesn't create a huge gap whenever you do this, but sometimes that little bit will level you out, so sometimes it's necessary. 
And finally, to finish things up, we're gonna come back and throw some thin set in between our grout joints there. The thin set is gray when it dries, so it'll look pretty good in between those stones. I went ahead and taped right up against the edge and along the bottom so it doesn't drip down. And we're gonna throw some of the thin set in one of the grout bags there, and then we'll fill in our cracks. So that is pretty much start to finish on how to do stone veneer on either a half wall or a fireplace or something like that. Probably the most time consuming part of this process is picking out the correct stones where you don't have huge gaps wherever you're placing them. Um, but take your time and make sure you're getting the correct stones and you'll get a great result like this. That is pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. Um, next we will be getting cabinets installed in here and I will be making the countertops for both the bar area as well as the cabinet areas back there. So be sure to come back and check that out. Thanks for watching Life of Bliss. I hope this helped you guys out and now you can tackle your own stone veneer project.